I'm Caitlin from Glass Design Center. I don't know about you, but I love Christmas. Have you ever wondered how he does it? How Santa delivers all those presents in just one night? Well, we can answer that with science. So to start off, we'll need an equation. We're going to be using speed is equal to distance over time. We'll start off with distance. According to my research, 108 million people around the world will celebrate Christmas this year. They live on average 1.2 kilometers apart. So if we crunch those numbers together, we can work out that Santa has to travel 129.6 million kilometers. Huge distance. He's only got one night to do it. Well, all of Christmas Eve. So you might think that that works out at 24 hours, but in fact, because of the rotation of the Earth and Santa traveling to different time zones, he actually has 31 hours to complete his task. And that's obviously 111,600 seconds. So now we have our distance and our time, we can work out the speed. So Santa traveled at a whopping 1,161 kilometers per second, incredibly fast. How is he managing to do that? He's definitely not running. And I think the reindeer can only go 25 kilometers per hour. So he must be doing something extra. Santa actually let us in on a little secret this year, he's upgraded the sleigh with rocket boosters. Let's take a little look at how those work. Before we can talk about rocket boosters, we've got to start with the basics. We need to understand fire. For a fire to survive, we need three things. We need oxygen, fuel, and we need heat. Together, they're the fire triangle. If any one of the elements of the fire triangle are taken away, the fire can no longer survive. Let me show you. In this bowl here, I've got some fuel. By taking off the lid, it's now exposed to all of the oxygen in the air. All we need now is some heat. So you can see we've made a lovely little fire. It's a blue flame, which means it's very, very hot. So this is probably good for roasting chestnuts, but probably not what you thought for launching a rocket. So I can take away the oxygen by putting on the lid and the fire will go out. pop that one away. So for a rocket booster, we want a more powerful fire. We can manipulate the fire triangle to take away a little bit of fuel and add a lot more oxygen. And that will give us a better fire for a rocket. So I have here a replica of the boosters that Santa uses on his sleigh. We've got the same kind of fuel, except this time there's more space for it mixed with the oxygen in the air by rolling it around like this and making sure it's all coated. So this time, we'll have a much more powerful fire. So we know Santa is using rocket boosters to help his sleigh go really fast. But how is he fueling them? Airplanes and things like that might be using petrol, gasoline, fossil fuels. They're really bad for the environment. Santa doesn't want the North Pole to melt, but it's okay. He knows this. He made an environmentally friendly switch. He now uses methane. Methane's a biogas. It's normally made when organic matter is broken down. So it's a bit like what happens inside your body when you eat food. The bacteria in your gut break it down and they create a gas. But we wouldn't call that methane we would probably call that farts. Now Santa's got nine reindeer as well. They're ruminants. They have a stomach inside them that is really good at making methane. Reindeer farts are actually 10 to 15% methane. So he's got the elves bottling that up to power his sleigh. And I can show you that here. So we know how fast Santa's traveling and we know how he's fueling his sleigh. But he's not going along the ground, he's going up in the air. So there's another thing we have to consider, lift. 
So Santa's sleigh is perfectly designed. It's aerodynamic, which means it cuts through the air super fast. But it's also an aerofoil. It's flat at the bottom and round at the top, a bit like a wing you would see on an aeroplane. The air rushes really fast over the top and increases the pressure in the air below it, pushing the sleigh up into the sky, generating lift. This is called the Bernoulli effect. And I can demonstrate this for you with some toilet paper. So I am now a toilet roll holder. I'm going to hold it very close to my face and I'm going to gently blow across the top. Did you see how that generated lift? That was rubbish. We can do better. This will be a lot more extreme. So Santa's traveling through the air super fast and at night time, it sounds pretty dangerous. It's okay though, because he has Rudolph to light up the way. She has a super shiny red nose. Yep, she. Did you know that all of the reindeer in winter that have antlers are girls? That means all of Santa's reindeer are girls. But not all reindeer have shiny noses, unless you look under a thermal imaging camera. So you can see here, this reindeer nose is glowing. And that's because it's warm. When reindeers are out in the snow and they're breathing in air, their noses are nice and warm and warm up that cold air before it goes into their lungs. We can see this through a thermal imaging camera, but we can't see it normally. Rudolph's nose, however, we can see it without a camera. That's because it's bioluminescent. That means it's creating light without creating any heat. I can't bioluminesce for you, but I can show you some luminescence. And I thought we could use it to light up our Christmas tree. So this is chemiluminescence, and we're going to use it to light up our Christmas tree. So there's one important group that we haven't mentioned yet, the elves. They're super important in helping Santa get ready for Christmas day. Because they have so many jobs to do, they need a lot of energy. And elves, they like to stick to four main food groups, candy, candy cane, candy corns, and syrup. Now that sounds like a super high sugar diet to me and you, but elves aren't like humans. They have a really high metabolism. That means their bodies burn through the sugar really, really quickly. I've managed to pinch one special elven jelly baby. I thought we could test out just how much energy there is in one of these. Apparently it's got 150 times the normal sugar that a human one would have. When scientists want to test out how much energy there is in food, they use a flame hit. So let's try it. So the elves eating that high sugar diet, that's going to have an effect on their body. I'm thinking specifically about their teeth. That's all right though, because Santa looks after his elves. They've got elf care. <laughs> so we managed to get a little sneak preview at the toothpaste recipe that elves use to take care of their teeth. I thought we could try it out here. So the ingredients for this recipe are super simple. We've got some hydrogen peroxide, which is going to be pretty good for cleaning and whitening those teeth. Lovely. And I asked for some fairy magic, so I'm just going to use a couple of squirts of what I've got here. That looks pretty good. And then the last thing is a catalyst. Catalyst helps speed up a chemical reaction, so hopefully it means we'll have our toothpaste pretty quickly. Let's give it a go. Oh, looks like we're getting loads. Oh my goodness, that's far too much. What am I going to do with all um, <laughs> Folks, that is us at the end of our show. If you have a little look, I think we've got a present. We've all been good enough that I think we can open it just now too. What's inside? Oh, we've got a balloon. And what else is in here? Oh dear. I think I'll keep this safe for later. 
Now this balloon is floating. So you might think that there's helium in there, but I think because it's Christmas, for an extra treat, we have a hydrogen balloon. Hydrogen is a very explosive gas. So I thought to end the show with a bang, we could set it on fire. Merry Christmas!